today we are restoring a Regina 27 inch changer disc music box have everything out of it parts are over here getting ready to clean them inspect them and put them back in the case this is one of the two governors that control the speed of the motor this one's been cleaned up and is ready to go back in you have the spring motor driving this gear which then pushes on a worm gear setup causes it to spin and as it spins the faster it goes the more these wings will fly out due to centrifugal force and as they fly out and get larger that causes the motor to slow down creates more friction against the air and as it slows down they collapse back in upon themselves and allow it to speed back up so it reaches an equilibrium where it'll spin at a certain speed there's a ruby jewel right here and that's taking up all of the force when you're pushing on here it's bringing this worm upwards pushing it up into that ruby bearing so you get a nice smooth easy movement motion with very little friction and then behind this plate and this plate are two small felt balls that are saturated with oil and so that keeps these pivots lubricated for a long period of time. I had to make this sleeve in order to remove the spring from the motor housing. I used the regular mechanism to be able to crank the spring up and then push the sleeve in and capture it and then let the tension off and pull the spring out. The sleeve is made from a piece of 4 inch EMT electrical conduit. This motor had damaged teeth that I filled in with brazing compound. Filled this whole area in so it was solid with brazing material and then used a slotting saw to cut new teeth and I've shaped them to match so the repair is all done. Here's a close-up of the governor controlling the speed of the main spring. I'll wind it up. And I'll stop it and the wings collapse when I let go, these wings will spread back out again. Now let's walk through the sequence of events that occur when the machine is going to play a disc. There are two spring motors. This lower one is responsible for changing of the disc, loading the next disc into playing position. The upper spring motor is responsible for actually spinning the disc and playing it. The bed plate that has the musical comb and the teeth on it has been removed. That bed plate sits right across the front here. And I've removed it so that you can see this governor which regulates the upper spring motor. There's a lever or a finger that comes through from the back side and it's controlled in the back when this finger is sitting in this position it's holding back or stopping the governor from spinning 
later when I go through the sequence here and the disc starts to play when this motor turns it turns because this lever lifts up and allows this governor to start spinning. The music box is started by moving this lever from stop to start and that lever works a rod that comes through and moves this little cam to push this lever back. The lever pivots and comes down and works the outer finger. There are two fingers stopping this governor. When you start the machine up this finger retracts and allows it to start spinning. When the mechanism starts up the first thing that happens is this motor starts to turn and there are two patterns cast into the ends of this motor. There's a pattern here on the outside. The other cam pattern is on the back side of the motor. There's an arm that goes up and that arm has a roller bearing right here on the end and this cam pattern as it turns it causes that roller bearing to be pushed outwards. I'm going to activate it with my finger here. That roller bearing moves out because it rides up onto this surface and as it pushes this arm outward that works this set of gears that drive a heart shaped cam and the heart shaped cam turns circular motion into linear motion back and forth. So each time this is activated it moves the disc carriage one increment, one disc forward. When it gets to the end of this heart or the indent and then starts back out that's what causes the arm to reverse and move backwards in the opposite direction. We get one full increment each time the next disc is played, like that, and then it plays the disc, ends back up in this condition at rest, goes to the next disc on the next play, and then when we get to the very tip of the heart-shaped cam, that will again reverse the linear motion of the carriage. Last disc, and then back in. The tip of this brass finger is sitting in a recessed pocket of the motor housing. And that brass finger goes up through some linkage, and then is connected down to this lever. So once the motor advances enough to take this finger out of the pocket and right up on a shoulder, that's a little bit higher. It keeps this finger pulled back and that allows the governor to now keep spinning and let the motor complete its cycle. Everything you see on this side of the motor, pockets and the cam, everything is duplicated on each side of the motor. So this motor actually can go through two complete disc plays for one revolution on, this, on the actual housing. It's the same with the, uh, the disc playing motor. It makes two complete plays of discs for one revolution of the motor housing. As the motor continues to rotate, the next thing that happens is that this roller bearing moves up onto this pattern which pushes the bearing and this arm outwards towards the edge of the motor and as it's pushing outwards 
it's going up and acting on a gear and that gear is driving this pulley the pulley goes up and over to the lifting arms these straps come down and attach here to these arms that lift the disc up so as this motor continues to turn activating this arm here and gearing assembly will cause the lifting straps to raise the disc up into playing position. After the disc has been raised to its playing position this roller bearing will come in contact with a raised area on this outer diameter you can't see it yet because it's way around the other side but as this makes half a revolution right at the end before it comes to a stop the raised area will cause this roller bearing to tilt backwards which rotates this shaft and that does several things rotating this shaft will act on this device or this lever which this fork gets pulled back and that clamps the disc in the front of the machine also rolling this will take this pin and throw it forward to go through the center hole of the disc and then it'll also pull back on this small arm which is attached to a tongue and that tongue hangs down and it's normally flipped out to guide the disc into position but right as it's clamping the tongue will swing back out of the way and this pin will go forward through the center hole in the disc. This is the tongue that is thrown outward to help guide the disc up and keep it from hanging up on this and then in the center is the pin that comes outward once the disc is fully up into position and the center hole of the disc is lined up this pin comes out to properly align the disc onto the bed plate so the teeth can be plucked at the same time that all of these movements are taking place that we've talked about you also have a lever arm here that is spring-loaded and there's a finger or an arm that goes through and it's riding on the back side of this motor and there's a pin that causes the arm to get thrown down and putting this in a downward position will cause a couple things to happen. When this is down and we allow this to make its half a rotation we have a second finger, a brass finger, and a second stop which as we reach our exact halfway rotation point and the disc has been loaded, everything set up ready to start playing, the second brass finger will fall into its pocket on the motor housing which will cause this other or second stop finger to be thrown out and stop the governor so we have loaded the disc the governor stops at that point and that same action that throws this out will also release a lever which will cause this arm here to drop back because the spring tension is pushing on the bottom side of this pivot so when this is down, the spring tension is waiting to push on here to pop this out. And when this pops out, it is connected to the long finger that goes through and it's currently stopping the other governor for the disc playing motor. So currently that's stopped, but as soon as we reach the playing position and this is fully loaded, then this will drop back and dropping that back lifts that finger up in front so the front governor can start turning and we play our disc. So as the disc starts playing, this arm is pointing down and this lever is up in the air or pointing upward. This motor will make half of a revolution. 
to play one full disc and as it does this pin will rotate around and push back down on this arm and as it pushes on this arm you'll see that this gets pushed back upwards and now the spring tension or the force of this is pushing on the top side of this pivoting point so I'll push down and you saw this move back up again which causes this little finger right here to be pressing on this outer diameter as it rotates around still playing a disc and when it gets to the end of the disc right at that same time this finger drops in to its pocket and this finger is connected to the long finger that goes through to the front and so as it drops in it drops back down and stops the governor so this no longer turns but at the same time that this drops in it's connected down to this second lever the stop lever which then causes it to retract pull out of the way and once this second stop arm pulls back out of the way it allows this spring motor to complete the one half of its rotation which causes the disc to be unclamped first thing that happens is this rolls off of the high point and allows this to unclamp the disc and then this roller bearing will fall off of that pattern and let the straps lower the disc back down and then right when it gets to its lowest point and we've completed one half of a rotation then that brass finger falls back into its pocket and the first lever flies out into the path stopping the governor and we've completed the entire disc play. All right, that was a lot to talk about. Let's see it all happen together in unison. Here's a view looking up from underneath the mechanism. I'll start it up. That's what's going to clamp the disc at the very end of its travel. And then we throw out this second arm to hold the governor while in playing position. On the back side of each disc, the holes that you see in the disc are actually strips that have been bent up and curled and leave a protrusion sticking up and those are what play the musical notes the protrusions on the disc do not pluck the teeth directly but instead rotate a small star wheel and the wheel is what plucks on the tooth I will attempt to rotate one of these star wheels and pluck on the tooth Now notice, when I get to the spot where right before I'm about to pluck the tooth, it'll actually stop the vibration, the tone. Here I'll do one, and get, rotate, and it stops it right before it plucks it again. Stops the tone. 
that's being caused by an elaborate set of dampers. This little tiny blade is sitting right next to the tooth and as this star wheel rotates, right before it plucks it, it brings the damper against it to stop vibration. So as the protrusions scroll by, you get individual plucks with individual tones, not just a tone fading out and another one following behind it. You get individual unique tones. Let's take a look behind the disc as the teeth are getting plucked. starting it and when this finger right here this lever finishes raising you can push it back downwards until it's at this position which will allow the lower spring motor to continue through and complete its full half of a revolution so the disc will never become into playing position you'll simply load it and then immediately unload it and go back to stop so we'll start it up this lever gets raised. As soon as it gets done raising, push it back downwards. Now there's no disc here, but if there was, it would be loading into position, clamping, and then immediately going back and unclamping. And stop. To change out any of the discs and put in different ones, after you open the doors, then this ledge here or shelf hinges upwards and allows you to get to all the discs easily. Just pull one out and put a new one in. Here we'll start a new record. Watch the carriage move and increment to the next disc. Lifting arms will go up and grab the disc and load it in position. disc is played you have the option of selecting which tune number you want. This rotates the magazine from 1 to 12 and then continuing to rotate it 12 back to 1. So that's also the order in which it'll play the discs. This is the original plate that was there. Not much left of it. So I made this brass one, polished it, and sealed it. That'll last a little longer now. Here is the finished product. Let's play Flight of the Butterflies.
Thanks for watching. Have a great day. For more information, visit gameroomrepair.com.